This Is How We Do, a documentary series about black hairstyling and culture. We are Crown Magazine, and this is how we do edges. So the first person that I saw where it was more like intricately styled was Josephine Baker. So I just remember like the real slick swoop of the edges and just how that made you know, the essence of her performance that much more um, amazing to watch. So I think just the attention to detail is what really caught my attention, um, finding out about her and um, also just seeing how the styling of baby hairs has just transformed and kind of gone back to that. The closest that I've ever seen to baby hair in our prior history started in the 20s with the finger waves. So you had women like Josephine Baker and Baby Esther, who was a jazz singer, who was the inspiration behind Betty Boop. They had, it wasn't necessarily their baby hair that was swooped, but it was their entire hairline. And it was their sideburns that was swooped like around into curly cues. And that became very, very trendy, but it was like black women who really just went that extra mile to make sure that everything was swoopy and just that like it became like very, very, very designed. And then after that, you had the war and you had women who just, that style, that whole polished look just kind of came out of fashion because it wasn't really deemed necessary. So then you had a lot of bouffant hair. But the one thing, even though the, the, the intricate swoops kind of went away. The one thing that remained the same was just having a neat hairline. Like that always remained in fashion. So when we, in the 50s when women would style their hair and have these kind of like bouffant do's, the hairline was always super straight. So in the 60s, it was all black power movement, having a natural, straightening your hair was kind of contra to black power. And so you had these women who just had these like afros and weren't concerned with their hairline at all. But with that, with that trend, you know, as it starts to taper off, then you start seeing afros with hairlines. And the most prominent woman I can think of in the 70s who had it was Thelma from Good Times. In the 70s, women started straightening their hair again and just experimenting with what they can do with their hair. You saw a lot of braids and beads and uh, Diana Ross and Celia Cruz actually like it was a it was still keeping the black pride but like going a little deeper into African roots and seeing like drawing from that as women started to change their name to more African names then you just you saw it reflected in their hair and it became more of a thing of like okay we can have our natural big you know statement hair but we can also straighten our hair and we can also braid it we can pretty much do whatever we want with that and so going into the 80s then it became that times 10 women were like making their hair really big you have patty labelle who is just like making her hair as big as possible as stiff as possible as angular as possible and it takes a lot of gel and a lot of hairspray to do something like that so again you see you know her hairline slicked back as an extension into like her big spiky hair and then you also have women like salt and pepper who are gelling their hairlines as they had their asymmetrical haircuts and um baby hair as like people becoming really conscious of it because it was something that we did unconsciously just to keep our hairline straight because you don't want to look like your hair is not done but i think it became very specific and intentional in the 90s because of women like Chili from TLC and Janet Jackson with her box braids and slicking the baby hair down. I think it became more of a thing of pride. Okay, I'm a black woman, okay? I deserve respect. And then also you have the emergence of hair products that are like iconic, like Let's Jam. Like that is probably the most iconic hair product packaging that I know of. 